That is probably what we're going to take away from this movie. <sighs> I got exercise with face muscles. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think... I don't know. I, I went into this movie 300. Rise Three, 302. 302. As I said, as I thought before I came to see it, and I will still call it 302. 302, 302 Dalmatians. <laughs> but uh, I went into this movie just expecting another 300. And that's exactly what we got. Yeah. And, you we know, totally for, got that. For better and for worse, although not nearly as meme worthy. Oh, no. There was, uh, you don't have the, uh, ama the amazing quote. You don't have, like, this is Sparta. You don't have that moment. You don't yeah. have. Um... You don't have the, the uh, kicking into the pit. You don't have the. Um... Yeah, although, it, it's not like this movie is not for lack mm -hmm. of memorable moments or anything like that. It Absolutely was, not. It was just. <sighs> There's nothing that you're going to... There's no moment that you're going to see on 4chan a billion times by, mm -hmm. the, by the year end. And I don't know. I think that's the... Really, that's what keeps it from being... Sands the boobs. But... No, no, no. Like saying, well, well, of course, the topless scenes, of course. Mm -hmm. But but there's just none of that... There's none of that instantly quotable, instantly endearing moment in that movie. In, like, in this movie. No. And that's ultimately why this movie is not as good as the first 300. No, it is not as good as the first 300. And 300 wasn't really a good movie either. It's a, it's it's just a guilty pleasure movie. Yeah. And and I guess by that measuring stick 302 is <laughs> <laughs> 300 was not enough. <laughs> this time. We need 302. We have 302. But by that measuring stick 302 is, you know, it's it's a good movie. I mean, if you're willing... It's still a bro flick. It's still like, you know, the broest of the bro flicks. It didn't feel quite as a uh, army of one message as the first one did. Oh, you mean the, like... As, you know, join the army kind of feeling to it. It, it, it was a little bit less. A little but bit. still the same kind of thing. It still has that, you know, like, you know, shirtless yeah. dude, shirtless dudes just talking about, like, honor and death. And Absolutely. Fighting and... Ex nothing wrong with that. And nothing and nothing I'm, wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all, especially with the introduction of probably the best part of the movie, Ava mm -hmm. Green as Artemisia. <laughs> Ava oh, Green yes. plays basically the Xerxes of this film. Even though Xerxes is in this film, he, he's not in it for very much, which kind of pissed me off. Yes. He, I mean, it's fucking Xerxes. It's, 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 I will say the feminist in me had a... Uh, had some had uh, mm. the, uh, 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 the feminist in you it was, was a little bit mixed feelings about that yeah yeah like on one yeah. hand, like on one hand on one hand you have uh, Ar Artemis Artemisia Artemisia or Artemisia Misia yeah it's Artemis <laughs> is going into battle leading the army the as Navy. a woman the Navy and it's awesome yeah. And she gets all kinds of amazing wardrobe changes. I'd say uh, rivaling Halle Berry on the set of X Men, <laughs> but they're pretty badass. You even got you got one that was. Uh, I'm sorry, but this is just what my focus is on the movie. Oh, uh, of course. Uh, she gets all of this freaking uh, golden chain mail. Uh, she has a dress made of uh, cat and nine tails. Mm -hmm. She has these whips hanging from her waist. It's pretty fucking awesome. Yeah, I have to say. I mean, like, if there's one thing to say about this movie, the costume design... The is... costume design... Well, maybe not for the soldiers. Not I mean, for it was the... the same thing as I mean, 300. The... I mean, like, the hot You got light. the leather thongs, and you got blue capes, and... blue... 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 capes instead of red. Because they're Athenians, not uh Not Spartans. so good for when the uh, CG blood gets on you, though. Huh? No, no. Yeah. yeah. Or as I like to call it, CG tar. I swear that blood was... <laughs> <laughs> it was more so than the first 300. I mean... 302 had some gelatinous like, CG blood in it. Oh, God. It was like the, easily the worst CG blood I've ever seen in a film. The worst. Yes. I mean, the CG blood in the original 300 was like bright red. And it was... And even though you knew it was fake, at least it kind of lent itself to mm -hmm. the cartoonishness of uh, the exaggeration of the mm -hmm. first film. But here, it's... Distra all oh, it is, yeah! Is, all it is is distracting. It's it like, is Kool-Aid. It's like if Kool-Aid, the yeah. Kool-Aid man was filled with Smucker's jam. Uh -huh. That's exactly what that is. Oh, good. But yeah, Artem Art Artemisia. Artemis. I'm just going to call her Art yeah. Artemisia. Artemisia. Um, 
Artemisia, awesome stuff. She uh, one of her outfits is like the Necromongers from uh, Chronicles of Riddick. She has the spine on her back. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I, I don't know if they, if they actually would have had that, you know. But but I, but you know, don't go into this movie expecting something that is mythologically accurate or historically or anything. Oh, accurate. please, no! Like they they talk yeah. about this film about like Greek freedom, even though. Okay, mm. all right, two things. One, they didn't call it Greece, they called it Helena. Back we need in... to say spoilers. <laughs> no! <laughs> like, listen, what is there to spoil in this movie? I just wanted to Never. I just wanted to say spoilers so you could say that. <laughs> just, I just wanted to... <laughs> oh, so the, the movie is... Set... All right, all right, I'll go back to my original point. But the movie is set up like a side quill. Yeah, give them the synopsis, yes. The movie is set up like a side quill, and... Uh, which is basically like, well, 300 was happening, this was happening, even though that doesn't make sense by the end of the movie. Because it got, It's a little confusing in the beginning because it's, okay, wait, which story are we going to, to go with here? We have... Yeah, because it's the Queen of yeah. the Spartans recounting basically the first film, but then like where she is in context to the movie is basically the end of the movie, so there's this frame narrative going on. But the problem with that is that they're framing the past, so it's mm -hmm. technically a prequel, but it's not because it's technically happening at the same time as mm -hmm. 300 is happening. Yes. So it's technically a side quill. But that doesn't make sense because at the end of the film, it's revealed that, uh, uh, you know that storyteller? The storyteller Spartan who was telling all the Spartans about 300? The eye guy? Yeah, the eye. Yeah. He's in the bat the ending battle, but how can he be there when he's leading the ten thousand Spartans mm -hmm. against Xerxes at the end of for three hundred? So technically, it, is this is this before three hundred or is this mm -hmm. after three hundred? You could actually play. Pro you could play three hundred when this comes out on DVD. You could pl probably play it next to this one. Actually, that'd be that'd be really fun to do, like as an editing exercise. See if you can yeah. edit together three hundred and two and three hundred chron uh, chronologically happening uh, co the... coinciding with each other. Yeah. It would be like a three and a half yeah. hour movie, but that would be like the best movie. Mm -hmm. It's just like, it's three and a half hours. <laughs> it's three and a half hour of Zack Snyder bullshit, but... <laughs> you, yes, if you could master edit it together, you could have one really uh, long movie that was full of awesome um, <laughs> like, CG blood. And... It's, it's like three and a half hours of fast paced slow-mo and CG blood. Oh, and more uh, more boobs in this. More boobs in this movie, mm -hmm. in which... Which is where, you know, the feminist me, yeah! So it was a woman and take a ch- Oh, hey! Oh. Well, boobs, sure. Sure. I like boobs, I like- I mean, like, let's let, let's not mince words here. I mean, you- Just mm -hmm. because you are- Just because we are, let's be- mm -hmm. well, Just because we are for, you know, treating women mm -hmm. as people doesn't mean that we can't en and enjoy the view. Yeah. I mean, I mean like, thank you. Th thank you, movie. And uh, you know, it was kind of it was kind of balanced. You got Xerxes, uh, got golden he, sparkling got abs, golden Xerxes. He's like ten feet tall, and he's got a metal bikini. I mean, this was like a perfect example of hey, why don't you try wearing what I have to wear? You know, in the battle. <laughs> well, not in the battle. Like, well, he doesn't. Maybe in, I guess in the first I movie. Like, I love how the I, I love how the men in this movie mm -hmm. has a way way more revealing battle costume than the woman in exactly. This movie. And there's there's part of my mixed feelings about it. Wow, in a in a way, this bro flick is kind of a chick flick. I mean, like if you're just talking about the if, you're just, if you're just talking about yeah, I'm just talking about man meat, man. It's it certainly delivers. Well, the, the thing is with this movie is the first in the first three hundred two is that uh, you, you have heard of the concept of the male gaze in cinema, right? The male gaze, or the male gaze, like you know, like the male gaze in cinema. It's where because uh, we're talking about three hundred. Yeah, yeah, no, we're so. so yeah, of course. But it's it's you know how certain shots are framed mm -hmm. to accentuate what a male perceives in the world around. Yes, him. like a uh, Black Widow in uh, Avengers, where the, it focuses on her ass. Yeah, like when she's talking to Loki. That's an example of male gaze, uh, according to feminist theory, feminist cinema theory. Sorry, mm -hmm. and. Uh, but to see it in this context is really weird because no, in no other film, I would argue that the male gaze is used on the male figure in such a kind of a homo, homoerotic, uh, homoerotic way because there is no de there is no denying that the the movie kind of accentuates the male form just as it does the female mm -hmm. form. And uh, they certainly had a line. Uh, what was it? I I am uh, wasn't married, but 
uh, you know, like uh, there was this line yeah. where the 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 the, the King Leonides yeah. character of this movie is uh, uh, Theo Domestic Domesticles. Dem- <laughs> No, not the Mysticles. Theo the Mysticles. Some, or Theo, something. Theo something. And um, he basically says, like, when, when she... Right. It's Domesticles. Do, it's not Domesticles. Shut your face. There's this great scene in the movie where she... Where, uh, <laughs> where Ava Green's character is trying to seduce... Uh, I'm just going to call him King Leonides Light. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, King Leonides Light to, you know, defect from Greece... And just join her, join her at her side as a commander and all. You know, master and commander. Mm-hmm. And uh, he basically says, "My, my, for all my adult life, my passion and my love has always been my troops, my men, my troops." Which, first off, he's it's a naval battle, yes. and so when you kind of put that context to like navy, a lot of men, and mm-hmm. you look into like that sort of Greek, Greek, you see that kind of. It doesn't take much to connect the dots, especially. Mm-hmm. And one could argue that when they're framing the male body, they're framing it for power and for finesse and agility. Yes. Rather than sexualization. But mm-hmm. I would argue that sexualization is based on the viewer, not on the gaze. Because mm-hmm. you could sexualize anything. And to some people, power and physical prowess is sexy. But that's putting way too much thought in this movie. <laughs> I was gonna wait till you were done. <laughs> well, well, it was an interesting point I wanted to make. It was an interesting point I wanted to make. Oh, it's enlightening. Yeah. yeah. But uh, going back to like the historical inaccuracy. That Actually, kind of... uh, comment on um, Artemisia about uh, the diplomacy scene. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So he, uh, it, it, it's it's uh, they both fuck each other. Mm-hmm. That's their diplomacy, and they have like a they have like a fuck fight. It's the it's easily yeah. the best. Fuck fight scenes and shoot it's him up. It's awesome because, <laughs> you know, he, he gets gets her on the table and back, for, you know, going at it. And then and she's like, yeah! and then she like, turns over and spins him around and forces him against the wall. And she's on top now. And they go through that back and forth. It's like a back and forth. Yeah, and it's, 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 pretty, it's pretty amazing. It's a, it's, it's a fuck fight scene. It's a, they're fuck fighting. But prior to that, she's, uh, commi- she's, she's trying to get her men to... Be good men. Be good men. Be, be, be like, good little soldiers. Be her. good soldiers for her. Yeah. You know, she says, you know, my problem is I'm so disappointed with all you men, you know. I just need, I need to find somebody who can be a soul to, to stand beside me. And, and then you realize, oh my god, she is totally using her vag to command men. Mm-hmm. And, and she's, and then because so, as soon as she says that, and the guy's like, "Yes, yeah, yes, yes, you, uh, kind of, <laughs> you, uh, I, I completely concur." Because they all, you know, they, you know, they really hate her because she's, well, the <laughs> one, she's Greek, which, was, yes, she's a uh, Greek, and, and she, she's a woman, which. I we don't have a problem with, but let's face it. At that time, that, yeah. there were mixed feelings about that. Of course, and the, yeah. the the best part about that scene, well, basically her character is I spit on your grave. Mm-hmm. So it was just when she started using the the pussy whip, the, the pussy whip, uh, <laughs> her special ability. Yeah, it, it was just like oh, she's resorting. To... Well, <laughs> she's resorting to using that to command. Well, they they, they, oh, uh, they make a point about that when. Um, which they're, they kind of give the sort of backstory to Xerxes at the beginning of the mm-hmm. film. And she basically took uh, Xerxes aside when he was just a man. And turned him into a god by randomly sending him out into the desert. And then oh, finding yes. this random pool out in the middle of fuck nowhere. That had to be addressed. Uh, yeah, of course. We had to know how did Xerxes turn into this golden dildo of a man. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I mean, he's, I'm sorry, but it's, he true. really is. He's a golden dildo of a man. But, you know, he finds this random magical pit in the middle of the desert. Yeah. And he emerges, you know, the golden Xerxes god. Mm-hmm. It's narrated. Uh, by the by the queen yeah. of Spartans. Like, how the fuck did she know? She narrates most of this. I, I don't know how she knows some things, but yeah. maybe she used the divining ladies they have. Yeah. Now, this movie was so full of con- convenience, as it were. Like, the, like the, the main character goes all around... All around Greece, yeah. and like, bam, bam, mm-hmm. bam, from like Athens to 
to Sparta. He doesn't from have Sparta to the Aegean you know, Sea. Kind of, he doesn't have very many messengers, does he? He no. does a lot of that himself. Yeah, which is uh, blah, 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 blah. But, you know, he's also able to uh, pull a horse out of his ass. <laughs> we'll get to that. <laughs> we'll get. To but uh, I actually wanted to backstep a little bit. Uh, <laughs> About the whole Xerxes coming out of the pool as a god king. Yeah, and then she is pulling his strings. Oh, absolutely. She is basically took him by the side, like you're going to be a god and you're going to lead these people. She, she tells him what to say. You, can, you know, she's mouthing the words. He's up there doing his speech. Well, I want I wanted to address the fact that you, you, it starts the movie off with him coming, you know, coming out of the water, all magical, glowy, and shit, and uh, he's like ten foot tall now. Mm -hmm. it feels. It sets. The, it makes you think that this is going to be one of the a more of a clash movie, Clash of the Titans style movie, where they actually have magic and mythology, and you're like, okay, because this is a, yeah, he came out completely different than he was. He, he, you know, he had hair when he went in, and he was shorter and kind of just average. Just a dude. Then he comes out bigger, bulkier, dildoier, as you said. <laughs> yeah. And but that, that's the end of the magic of the, in the movie though. Well, pretty much. Well, well, yes, the the magic horse that comes out of his. The, ma the magic but... horse and like I have. <laughs> How is it in this month alone that I've seen two magic horse movies? <laughs> I mean, first this, now like <laughs> I still have yet to see that, and no, I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait. Winter's Tale, go mm -hmm. see it. It's probably out of theaters, but when it comes out on DVD, watch that movie. It's. <laughs> Why couldn't that have been one of her movies? Uh, I, you know, had I known about it back then, I would have yeah. probably taken it, us to see it. But no, no, we had to see something else. I forgot what that week was. But anyway, the the problem I think I had, the main problem I have with this movie, other than the fact that there's no mimetic kind of moment in the movie, mm -hmm. was the fact that. On one hand, like, I understand why all the characters are sort of interchangeable. Mm -hmm. There's a fungibility to them. Yeah. Like, you can't really reckon... All you can really recognize is the main guy, and but he looks just like everyone else. But yeah. I get that, because there's a supposed... Because there's a sort of trading. Like, like you can replace one Spartan soldier or one Ath Athenian soldier with another. And I get that, and I know that's the point, but because there's so lack of character, and there's so lack of defining characteristics that you can't really latch on to anyone in the film. I mean, even King Leonides, like, even Leonides had at least mm -hmm. a presence in the film, and this guy didn't. I found uh, Artemisia to be the most attachable character. Well, yeah. Because honestly, she... Because she had a history. She had a history. Yes, she, they did, she did have a... Uh, she it, had a history that... It was pretty sloppy and lazy, but it was a history. It was a history, and... Uh... She was abused, and uh, she was raped by men as a child, and... Mm -hmm. Of yeah. uh, she, she has character drive. She has character drive, but like I said, it's pretty lazy and sloppy. Yeah. But like I said, at least there was there, and at least there was something to hold on to. But with mm -hmm. everyone on the Athenian side, there really isn't much outside of like maybe the father and son side characters mm -hmm. were kind of unimportant. Yes, they replicated the father and son relationship. Except the father dies in the here and not the son. Mm -hmm. Well, then it, technically the father died in that. By the end of the film, the father died. But that wasn't that <laughs> defining moment. No, no. But uh, the son wound up li wound up living. Uh, <clears throat> Where were we? We were. I was about to talk about the historical inaccuracies of the film, which is many mm -hmm. and noteworthy. But the one thing that yeah. really bothered me about that is like everyone was so careful to name historically accurate names of this movie. They called mm -hmm. them Hoplites for Soldiers. They called... Uh, they used the correct names for everything, but they called it Greece. They called yeah. the country Greece instead of Helena, which is... Okay, I get why you call it Greece, because everyone everyone outside of Greece knows it as Greece, but everyone in Greece knows it as the Hellenic Republic. And they call them... They are Hellenites, or mm -hmm. they're Hellenic. So... I guess that that bothered me, but I know why they did it. You know, you know, for you know, dumbass. But these ones were Athenians. I mean, they're they're Athenian, but they're Athenians. They're uh, well, they, all right. The main the main troops are Athenians. They're, they're Athenians, but there's like Athenian Spartans, Arcadians, uh, Thebe, Thebans, Thebians, Thebians. But yeah. the whole country itself is known as Helena. Yeah. Well, back then, at least. But uh, they referred to themselves as uh, I believe Hellenites, or they were. 
Hellenic. Either, yeah, either I, way, I fail to recall my Greek 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 history right now. But, but, but uh, that kind of that just kind of you know, irked me a little. But you know, it's but it's as, a fucking as we pointed movie. out when you come, they, they may establish from the from the get go that this is not going to be very accurate. Yeah, <laughs> that's made very clear. So we don't have the expectation. Would they really tone down like they, they tone down the monster presence in this film? Like, hmm. Like yeah. in the like in three hundred, they had like that big fat guy with blades for arms, and he would just decapitate officers. Which honestly, I always felt was a little thrown in there. Yeah, just so they could say, "Look, it's big monsters in the previews," and yeah, but that's just me. Well, they toned that down, but um, I kind of miss that. Hmm. I, I really did. I, I miss the, the 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 presence of uh... what's the word I'm looking for. I miss the presence of the Persians. Yeah, I mean, like we, there was like more, it, there was more of a focus on like the Persian uh, officers, and there was more certainly more focus on Ava Green, mm -hmm. but there wasn't like a moment where like then he attacked with archers. Well, you know, he, yeah, and they didn't attack with their magic, which was basically the main. Power. The main Greek general is uh, is a. I'm sorry, the the main uh, Persian general is a Greek person, woman. So he's, he's a, a Greek, Greek woman. Person. Yeah. So, uh, it, no, it's not as much about is the Persians a... in this one, even though they outnumber them through most of the movie, it's... just like the last movie. Mm -hmm. there, you don't really see as much of them, which is kind of weird. Yeah, I mean, it's... I, I felt like I was kind of watching Pompeii again at certain points, but... And that's not to Pompey's credit, though. That's... Oh, oh, this was better than Pompey. Oh, yeah, yeah, this was Pompey. This was the movie that Pompey wanted Oh, yeah, to so be. to put it on a scale for you, <laughs> I guess uh, Pompey's right about here, and this movie's right about... Well, yeah, what's at the top? What well, would you say like, is... Uh, like, on the top of this a, kind of genre. For this kind of... Like, 300... Gladiator would be the top. No, I wanted to... I mean, Gladiator's nothing like... Let's, let's not... Let's not even put that in the yeah, same... Like, genre. Okay. like 300's Trying here, think of... 300's here, 302 is about here, and then Pompey's about right here. Yeah. For like, is if we want to talk about Greek action movies, yes, Greek spectacle action movies, yes, then the, that's the that's the the uh, pecking order. A shame on I me mean, for even mentioning Gladiator yeah, like, in the what, same what sentence. What the hell are you doing? The same man? sentence is three hundred. <laughs> is this when I when you you know when I think Pompeii? Oh yeah. It was just such a freaking re reenactment of Gladiator that failed. You know, Gladiator meets Titanic. Yeah. So. But uh, we already yeah, but we we, we already reviewed that movie. Yeah. But the, it's not like this. We I don't want to come off like we just didn't like this film because that's not true. Because it wasn't true. It was a fun movie. It there was. was there's this growing trend in Hollywood, or at least a trend that I hope is dying, is movies that are dumb but they know they're dumb. So, yes. but there's an insufferable attitude to that. I find yeah. what, what 302 is. It's dumb. But if it knows it's dumb, it doesn't act like it. It plays mm -hmm. itself as serious as possible. And at least there's a sort of charm to that. Absolutely. There, there is a charm to 302 that... Uh, it's a bloody, gory... It's bloody, gory. It, it's, it's exploitative, yes. but, in a, but in an acceptable and kind of fun way. I mean, mm -hmm. you're not going to go into this movie... You know, expecting a good story, you're not gonna get it. Yeah, you won't be bored, but you certainly will not be bored. Which that's saying a hell of a lot more than some of the films we've seen. Yeah, I mean, it's a constant barrage of uh, yeah. entertaining scenes, not mimetic scenes, but mm -hmm. at least entertaining scenes, like uh, the, the fuck scene, like the fuck fight scene was gr was yeah. incredible. <laughs> that, that, that was fucking incredible. Oh, yes. uh, the the naval battles were. I don't. I don't want to say there were. I don't want to say there were well directed because there was mm -hmm. certainly some shaky cam bullshit in there. But at least there it pre, it presented itself in a way that I ha <clears throat> I haven't seen been done yes. to death a lot. <clears throat> I wasn't sure how they were going to carry out the uh, the battles the sh the battleship scenes where they have people almost like a you would expect in Pirates of the Caribbean as soon as you see two boats oh, yeah. as soon as you see two boats and you're like oh is this going to be like that we're going to start putting silverware in their cannons or some crap you know yeah. and they don't have cannons but you know what I mean uh, but no it's not, it, it was not stupid it was not stupid silly like you thought it was uh, until the horse came out until the, let's talk <laughs> about the horse now. yeah so the final battle happens <laughs> and it's, so it's only like a few or it's a few Athenian ships against the whole yeah. Persian navy 
So, uh, <laughs> yeah. The, the fight ensues. The main guy decides to cut loose a horse that he... Did you never see? Yes. And then he just rides this horse through fire, water. They're on the ship. You never have any... Uh, there's never established to be a horse. There's never established to be any animals on these ships. But uh, that lo always... and behold, last moment before their ship's like destroyed, <laughs> just like seconds before, he gets out his hidey tidy so uh, horse out of this little box or cabin thing i guess i don't know where did it come out i don't know i, I, don't, I, don't, know. I don't even know if they showed where it came out it just kind of it just came it was out. awesome you know, the horse it's like it's like they had this whole thing planned out or something the horse starts going and he runs and just as the horse gets not even like leg loss <laughs> he, he, he literally jumps into midair with his feet in a uh, straddle position and kind of seagal style and lands on the horse and we're just laughing our asses off I mean, while the, the horse bros in back of us are like we're like <laughs> and it's like the horse goes through like a he pressed x and triangle and circle circle yeah when it came up you know it's it was just like a video game it was a quick time event of a scene yeah. where the horse just jumped from ship to ship flaming ship yeah. goes through the water freaking fire and shrapnel, and shrapnel and swords and spears oh my god <laughs> and then what is ha what happens to the horse and just gets to his destination is that by horse by horse i don't know where the fuck <laughs> that horse went you got me where i needed to go i guess and <laughs> you can go off to uh swim away <laughs> swim back to swim back to uh swim back to greece or <laughs> yeah you're a horse you could swim, swim right back... <laughs> <laughs> but oh I, I nearly forgot we didn't ava green was the best part of this movie not only because yeah. she was like the most like her character was the one that you could latch yourself onto but also because her performance is like this she looks like avril lavigne in this movie she's well i agree with you there especially when she had the eye well she shadow always, which, she always had the eye you know, shadow, there was but... there was some points where it was really raccoony looking yeah. but point point being she does look like avril lavigne if avril lavigne was better looking i guess yeah, mm -hmm. but she's like, she's she's like you know a little better yeah. built she's got more bone structure bigger bone structure so which is which is very distinguished and uh kind of different from uh, a lot of your typical model looking woman that they'll throw into movies well, like and, this and put them in chain mail well, and say yeah well she's allowed to be like really evil in this movie which yes. is more than you could say for any other villainous in like movies today she had a kind of michelle rodriguez side of her oh, yeah she did like but... where she's there's a scene where you can't really <laughs> I don't know if you can see. I don't think you can see no, my legs see. right now, but she, she's kind of like this. She's got her legs spread open. She's talking over she's her mouth. She's got the apple and the knife. You know, just oh, like Michelle yeah. Rodriguez. That was like Michelle Rodriguez and Lost. Yeah, and I was a little worried at that point. I was like, wait, are we gonna have some moxie here? Or like, no, she was. She was. She was brutal. Yeah, she was just. Brutal. She was brutal. But like her performance, it's just like every so often, like she would kind of like. Something in her head just let let go of the reins, mm -hmm. and she would just put on like these constipated, pouty faces. Like when she got review, like when she got news that the commander had base, like the the Athenian commander yeah. basically wiped out her forces. So she just puts on this face, like like she smelled a bad fart. <laughs> she kind of looked. She was like a constipated squirrel. It's like yeah. like she kind of like. Actually, the face we were doing at the beginning. Yeah, that was, was that yeah. was, a... <laughs> and uh, along with the fuck fight scene and that her response to the fight scene. Yeah, that's not gonna get a lot. I love it. <laughs> yeah, uh, like I said, the best one since shoot 'em up. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> have you seen that? Shoot 'em up. Oh, I have not seen. Oh, shoot em up, but I know. I think I know what you're referring to. Uh, Clive Owen fucks this. Uh, I, I forgot her name is, but like mm -hmm. bad guys are coming in. So he between like fucking her, he's like. Like, dual-wielding pistols and shooting them as they're coming in. You see, when I think of that, I think of Drive Angry. <laughs> Have you seen that? Yeah, I've seen Drive yeah. Angry. So you don't... Nicolas Cage, fuck fight. Well, she's not part... Yeah, she's, she's not doing anything, but she's scared out of her mind. But if you haven't seen it, Nicolas Cage is railing this... this 
It's Nicolas Cage. He's really... I don't need to say anymore. Yeah, so he's like, railing this girl. He's got a gun in one hand and like a, a drink or a cigar. Or a cigar in his mouth and like a drink in the other hand. He's like, bam, bam, drink, drink, smoke, smoke, fuck, fuck. Yeah, yeah. It, I wish I wish I could write that scene into a review yes. of mine. But I can't. I have not found a way... <laughs> But give us give it. But uh, all right, he will get like, it. on this range, on this range, like that yeah. fuck fight scene. How would you rate that? Oh man, are, are we just to other fuck fight scenes? To other fuck fight scenes. I can't believe that Ooh. this has become a category. But best fuck fight scenes you've ever seen. I you think know, this is near the top. This is possibly the best because it's like personal yeah. and it's like you know it's like a game of fuck chess. It's, yeah, <laughs> it, it was visceral. Yeah, I know. It, it was, was dirty, visceral. It was and, dirty, visceral, like, and it wasn't. You know, and it wasn't demeaning. No, because for, for her, she was just as into this as he was. Exactly, like she was yeah. trying to seduce him, and he's you know wise, you know spry to her wily ways. Yeah. And the best part of this fuck scene is that she, you know, like this give and take. They're you mm -hmm. know putting each other like, ah, and then like yeah. just like attacking her, attacking him <gasps> with her vagina, and just he's just <laughs> returning and like bending her over like a rail, and just like. <laughs> Yeah, and they like they were oh, so yeah. fucking into it, and she's like, "Go, you gonna join me?" <laughs> he's like, "Will you join me?" And then he looks right at her and he's like, "No," throws her off. <laughs> yeah, we, so yeah, he's uh, and like, we, we join me. the best. He comes back the line. Yeah, and then like referring to that near then the ending fight scene, she goes like, "You strike harder than you fuck." Yeah, you fight a lot harder than you fuck. Oh no, you it did. didn't! And then it was on. It fucking it was on. Yeah, and then they did fight as hard as they fucked. Yeah, it was. But there was also that line when he comes back from the diplomacy fuck fight. <laughs> from the diplomacy fuck fight scene. Yes, the diplomacy fuck fight scene. Oh yeah, the guards outside are hearing this going on. And they just give them give each other one of these looks. Really? Well, except they have masks on. Yeah, like you the... know what they're doing yeah. under the mask. Because she finally found her soul to stand beside her. Why couldn't it have been me? Yeah. I mean, I have to wear this gimp suit all the time. I don't at least get it. Wouldn't mind being abused by her in that way now and then. Just courtesy, fuck. Just <laughs> courtesy. So, like, hard he, job. So he's rowed back to shore. He's rowed back to shore. He's like, so how, do, how was diplomacy? And he's like, when next we meet. She will give us her all. <laughs> she's, go <laughs> she's going to bring hell. Whatever. She's mm -hmm. going to bring it. Her... She's going to bring hell in her vagina. She's... <laughs> she was such a black fury. Yeah, she was. It, this mm. loved it. I love. I love. I love that scene. I love parts of this movie. I can't love the movie as a whole though, because there's just. There's these dumb moments, which you expect in the movie, but because there's no, because it kind of lacks the charm, you mm -hmm. can't really gloss over the dumbness. And people in back, of course, remind us of what scenes are really important. Yeah, when, like, you know, like, someone jumps off from a cliff from, like, 20 feet above and then lands, like, this cleaving, right, cleaving blow with their sword right through some guy's head. The guy had an axe on each side of his helmet. I was waiting for him to do a, <laughs> what is love kill? You know, like, like a, Ugh, what is love? Ugh, what is love? <laughs> kind of like that, kind of like that scene in Shigo, like, uh, when they cry, when the Higarashi, when, like, when he puts that knife, when she puts that knife right next to the, on the wooden plate, and then, like, <laughs> uh, uh, uh. <laughs> uh, Yeah, after, after he does the big cleave, actually, takes it off apparently that was just for uh i like uh, oh this damn protective helmet it's getting in the way i, I he that's just his his lead up so he can look cool i guess uh, i don't know and there was also uh, there the, were many times actually i have to say where they took the helmet off and just start beating people to death with their helmets which is fine which and is that fine. helmet was perfect for it but i don't think they used no. the axe helmet for that Whatever. there was also this weird scene like in like near like the towards the middle of the movie when like, she finds a spy on her ship, and then the spy mm. escapes, and we never hear from the spy again. Yeah. She's a coward. So, what, like... Like, yeah. Yeah, he was he was a coward. He was a... Well, that's something bad's gonna happen to that coward. But nothing ever happens. No. <laughs> I guess... I guess the cowards get to live. 
I, I, that is well, kind of the message, I guess. I suppose. In the first movie, the Hunchback. Was kind like, of what a, was he spying for? Like, who was he spying? Xerxes is coward. Hunchback's kind of a coward. Yeah, cowards are all alive still, even at this point in two, three hundred two. Those cowards, still, still alive. they're all still alive. So, still alive. I like uh, you I, could take that any way you want. Maybe that's the lesson that it's smart to be a coward. Or I don't know, but. <sighs> That, like, if this was 300 and they had a scene like this, I probably wouldn't mind it so much. But in this mm -hmm. movie, with the lack of charm, that stuff just kind of strikes out at yeah. you. Like, whatever the... What the fuck happened? I, I, you know what I think? It was probably a deleted scene. Hmm. But they needed that... I don't know why they even had... But if that was the case, I don't even know why they would... Why they had to have that scene in the first place. There wasn't... There was yeah. no nothing to set up the plot. There was nothing to say, like, you know, this is what we're going to do. There was really nothing in that scene other than, like, Ava Green just being like, yeah, I get to be evil. You know, I, I miss that. I, in a movie like this, there really mm -hmm. hasn't been, like, a villainess. Yeah, I, oh, God, you're telling me. I mean, like, if, if villainesses can be in Disney films, if villainesses can be in Disney yeah. films, why can't they be in our, like, spectacle action movies? Absolutely. You know, we've... I mean, we've seen plenty of, like, female, like, supporting characters. Yeah. Every once in a while we get a female hero, but we never get a female villain. You know, Even, I, I think I know yeah. why. Because they need to get it at the end. And mm -hmm. seeing a woman, like, getting stabbed in the gut or... Mm. Is, you know, that's still... We, we still haven't been able to cross that line as far as, you know, things can show. I mean, I mean they were able to get mm. away with a rated R so they could probably, you know... they. You know, she gets, so that's what happens. She gets stabbed in the she, gut. She gets stabbed um, in the gut, but and she's so brutal, of course, that she pulls the orc from uh, the fellowship of the, of yeah. the ring, where she shick, shick, until she's right up against him. And I'm like, oh great, they're gonna have her do that so she can get a kiss, last kiss. I'm no, like, but no. whatever. No, she did. And it doesn't happen, and I'm like. She, you know, awesome. She, uh, she did that basically. She just wanted to show him that, that she, she wasn't afraid of death. Was not, yes. Not afraid of death. And I think like it was... She was just as fucking brave as it, Domesticles was. Yeah, or Domesticles. Domesticles. <laughs> no, like I said, King, King Lang and Ides light. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you are saying. <laughs> but as I was saying, there is... We need to have... If, like if there was going to be like true equality in film mm -hmm. and true representation in film, there has to be, we, there has to be quarter given to villainesses, and not be afraid to show them that, you know, you know, mm -hmm. behavior dictates punishment, you know, like as far as the whole karmic payback, as mm -hmm. far as the structure and narrative is concerned, like if you're she's brutal and she is, you know, like relatably evil. I mean, like you have a history like hers. I mean, mm -hmm. you're not going to come out like Superman. Or Supergirl, but you still yeah. like she does take pleasure in the deaths of her enemies, and she does, and she is conniving, and she is manipulative, which the film didn't go into it as much mm -hmm. as I wanted it to. But you know, I I guess they wanted to establish that she could hold her own in a fight, not just have to rely on her vagina mm -hmm. to have men fight her battles, as they kind of implied which they lie with Xerxes because of the whole like I there was this line towards the end of the film before she goes off to battle in the sea for the last time she tells Xerxes you know like I'm gonna finish the fight and it's, mm -hmm. and it's like we well, can send out like a scout ship to make sure it wasn't a trap is like no I'm going to kill him and then you know he slaps right about the face yes. it's like I am your god king and she says like don't forget who put you on that throne mm -hmm. so and she basically marches off to her own death but she never pushed out about it. She never, you know, nope. was she never pulled like a Percy from Green Mile and was like this like simpering. Yeah, she wasn't really quite a villainous. Well, to be fair, I mean, well, almost. She's an antagonist. She's just an, an antagonist. antagonist. Yes. She's all right. I, I suppose, for lack of a better term, she's a villainous in that she is. Well, a, for I mean, for the story arc of the movie, she yeah. would be that place. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, so and so when she does. When she is killed by the hero, it you know it makes sense. It makes you know perfect sense because the mm -hmm. bad guy gets him in the end. It just happens yeah. the bad guy is a girl or a woman, rather. Um, and I think filmmakers are still kind of like kind of they don't want to have a villainous because mm -hmm. they don't want to have to show the villainous getting it in the end because oh, <laughs> get, yeah getting it in the end. Well, well she Rich, did get she it. Did get it in the end. Fuck fight scene. But um tish. But uh, 
No, but no, because I think there there's still like this stipulation that women are you know like dainty things and mm-hmm. like when 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 she when, like like that scene where she gets punched in the mouth, like we're supposed to have like oh shit he's not supposed to do that. I was like wait a minute no she, no for she, shame for shame like well, no wait she's a woman no she's like wait a minute she's the sword maiden who can hold her own in fights mm-hmm. like why why should we have an oh moment it's like no she can take it she almost likes it. Yeah, it's like... Yeah, I mean, a lot of times when she gets hit in the mouth, it happens a few times. Yeah, she, like, she, 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 she turns the face and is like... Mm, it's like blood trickling out. Mm, like, mm. like, I like the taste of blood. Or, like, uh, this is why I fight for. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, this is... That, that exhilaration of battle. And that is so rare in movies mm-hmm. today, especially mainstream movies, that I can only say that... If anything, like, if there's one thing to applaud for this movie, it was the fact that they had the balls to give mm-hmm. a, uh, an actress a role where she could be brutal, where she could be... Dominant. Dominant, and she can... and Hold she, her own. She can hold her own and not be ashamed when she finally meets her end. Mm-hmm. In fact, she can embrace it. And she can embrace it. As and that, she did. And, and that is, as far as I'm concerned, true equality. Yes. And that is true equality. And for that reason... And for that reason, I'm, I I think that... I very much love this movie, I guess. And I think, you know, like, I was about this. I was about this. Mm-hmm. But if, like, if... I three, after if, talking about it with you, I, I was about, like, there. But, like, when but we... But after talking about it and establishing her character, you know, mm-hmm. the role of... Uh, the, the role of the female in this movie and how big it was... And uh, somewhat groundbreaking. Is somewhat groundbreaking. I'm going back up to about here. <laughs> From here to here. Yeah, like, you know, it's on the better side. Yeah. It's on It's on the better side of... Well, one character, one person going that far up. Yeah, that far It's quite up. a difference. Like, it, like if, if, yeah. if 300 is about here, mm-hmm. 302 is about right here. You yeah. know, like, I, I can't say it was a good film. I can't say I liked it because of all the mm-hmm. annoyances and the dumbness that, that yeah. annoyed me. But... It's a film that I can look at with merit. Like, it has merit for its... It has fucking merit. Did I mention it has merit? So this also, with that... In, with that, uh, keeping that in mind, it's also very much a bro film. It's still a bro film, but... Do not go... Don't go into it expecting something intelligent. <laughs> it is a bro film. But it I... is bros on film. Bros on film. Two minutes later... Bros on film. film. CG blood coming in where he lies. <laughs> Only you would bust out the Duran Duran. But I think yeah. that's actually, that's actually, you know, like you sneak in something like this in a bro yeah. film. And that's great. It's, like It's it, very welcome. It's very welcome. You, yeah. you were expecting, you, it's a bro film, but then you sneak in like this great villainous. And what was it you said? Did you, I didn't hear, but you say one of the guys back there was like a... Uh, Artemis. Yeah. Oh, like when, when while we were leaving the while we were leaving the theater, the like, the bros that were behind us while we were leaving the film, one of them just did this bro yeah. call. He's like Artemisia, <laughs> and I'm thinking, well, well, you know what? I don't think he would be just doing that if it was a guy. Yeah. Well, so I, I mean, I, I was wondering if he was just like, oh, she was hot, but no. I mean, it sounded like like he, from what you say, it sounded like he was actually he pumped up by her, pumped up by her as a character, as a and character, not as a sexual object, but as a character and as like a yes. moment of badass. And right there, like right for one of the bros to do that for one of the bros, that's equality. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like if it's like that little moment like that movie reached he associated the female uh the main female in the movie with with being an awesome person person not just a woman no. a person person can we it's with startling it's with startling revelation that this may be the most <laughs> acceptably feminist film we've seen so far this and year and you know for me that's just like that's just like pornography for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, uh, every I, time. I love feminist messages. Oh. Oh, 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 God. Beat off to pictures of Gertrude Stein. Oh. Oh, <laughs> oh Gertrude Stein. Why can't I have you? Because it would be anti feminist, so that's why I can't. <laughs> you are your own woman! <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> on that note. Oh my god. Surprisingly likable film. Yes. Not as good as the first one. If you're in for a dumb, good movie, though. All right, all right. A dumb movie that you can enjoy. Go see 302. And uh, if you want to, you know, we didn't see it in 3D. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> I don't really feel like it. I mean, unless you want to see a lot of... What? I'm... I was the closest thing to me. <laughs> Get your hands off my barbecue scraper. <laughs> if you want... If you want to see a lot of that uh, coming up close, like, ooh, ooh, ooh jelly flying at dimensions. Face. Yeah, lots of, <laughs> you want, if you want to put on the smeared dark glasses, it, it, yeah, be, go for it. Well, if you just wanted that, just go see a Gallagher yeah. show and sit in the front row. Yeah. <laughs> Probably be cheaper tickets, too. Yeah. <laughs> but, like I said, it's a... Uh, it's one of those films that you could just sit back, yes. let the spectacle happen, and leave. Mm -hmm. You could just check your sensibilities at the door and, and enjoy yourself. Take care.